Okay, uh, lesson five. And this one has not really got a good title for it, but it's basically more stuff, more editing techniques that I didn't show you in the last lesson. Uh, okay, so here's the opening window. And top of the recent items is the edit we've did before. And there's that there. Yeah, well, this is the... Uh, image the uv image editor the one where we see the image we've rendered we want the video sequencer editor video sequence not sequencer there right so the first key press if you hold down the control key and press cursor up it zooms in to the uh, current panel on the screen so if i if my um mouse pointer is over here i can do that not very useful. Again, there's another one. There's this timeline here. Again, not very useful. But over here, that's a useful way to see stuff a bit bigger and use the screen a bit back. To, there's a back to previous button there. We could just hold down control and press cursor up again to go back to the whole view. There's also various different views here. And there is a video editing option amongst it. But to be honest, I mean, having... I think this makes more sense afterwards, but there's a lot, there's something very important missing from this. Um, it's like, if I go back to default here, you'll see that we're now missing this entire panel here with like render at the end buttons you need to render and control the file format of the stuff you're rendering and all stuff like that. So what, what do we actually get in return for that? Well, also this, this panel here with all the stuff to do with which we're actually going to spend a fair bit of time in this panel this time. That's been shrunk really small. We've got this, which is to do with keyframing. And I will explain keyframing either li this lesson or in the next lesson, according to how much I cover, depending on the time. Because I'm just going to go back to default. And right, so other things I was going to teach you. Oh, other key presses. Now, there is a home key on your keyboard that you probably don't press very often. Now, if you press it in this, it automatically zooms the view so that you can see everything. And that's surprisingly useful. There's also, if you've got a keypad on your computer, if you press the full stop or point or period button on the keypad of your computer, you get to zoom into the selected object. So if I select that by right-clicking it and press the um, uh, keypad point it zooms into that particular object that's quite a useful thing to do um, there's also color correction color correction is something we need to be looking at soon because it's what will make stuff look good and you'll like notice I mean they, these are pretty good because it's filmed on a sunny day and it does look nice but we could boost the colors a bit and so I've selected this and I'm gonna scroll down here and there are a load of different now, a load of different things. Saturation here in colours. I mean, we might want it to look black and white. We could set that to zero. Um, we could set it back to one. One is the original. And we, you can go up as high as you like. I, and let's see. Well, 2,000. Oh, it goes up to 20 and no further. So if we put it up to 20, we've got these. Everything's just these ridiculously uh, saturated colours. What's five look like? Um, yeah, I still think it's losing it. I'm going to go back to original there. I mean, two, just double the saturation of the original. That actually looks all right. I kind of like that. That looks a bit more storybook kind of thing. But I'm going to set that back to one for now as well. And there's uh, another thing, that the, again, scrolling up and down here, is modifiers is to add various different modifiers. And these... the you might have heard of brightness contrast. We could load that one up. And then we've got some brightness contrast here. So we could up the brightness to make it lighter. And we could up the contrast, um, I think, to make it more contrasty. To make the, well, contrast will make the darks darker and the lights lighter. But I don't want that. I'm going to press the cross there to get rid of that one. I want the more advanced one. I want... Um, uh, there's um, color balance. I mean, here we've got a lit is uh, we've got three different color correction things for the mid tones, the dark tones, and the light tones. So I could decide I want the the mid tones to be more green and more bright, and I want I think and I want um, yeah the dark the darker tones to be more dark and more blue. 
and there's uh, of course there's light tones as well which I want to be more light so I'm effectively upping the contrast again making the darks darker and the lights lighter but um, I'm a bit more in control with these and yeah the light colors I'm going to make more yellow as well right so that's that one and again they've each each got a little cross here to get rid of them so what else we got um, there's uh, I think my favorite however is curves and here right if I sort of say that that's the original colors so that's black in the oh, no this is the wrong way around you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to use curves because it makes so much more sense so if I bend it this way it will make it darker and if I bend it this way it makes it lighter but what generally is a good idea is to create a kind of S shape like that and that will make the darks darker and the lights lighter um, again I mean this you could do pretty much similar things on the on those three circles or or on this curves I personally prefer the curves you could also I could make drag this way and then that means that black starts a lot sooner I mean I could do something really drastic like that and it goes kind of a bit insane but generally generally you just go with a kind of S shape on this if you want it to sort of still be just you know uh, steel colors and I can delete individual ones of these points with this X here so I could slowly slowly turn this back into an original image before I decide I that's kind of interesting actually but no I'm just going to get rid of these whole curves effects so that's the those are visual effects you can do on those in the modifier thing those are all pretty nice but uh, if you shoot a lot of footage on the same day in the same lighting and you're editing it all together then you're probably going to want the same color correction on everything which is why I'm zooming out here and so for this if we there's another effect strip that's very useful called an adjustment layer and you see it's kind of dull green color there um, I grab that and put it on that and I'm going to tr grab this over the entire video home key again to zoom out to the oh yes the key has the cursor has to be on this area here home key again to ah home key again to uh, see the entire thing and I'm going to grab that and drag it all the way over there it doesn't matter that it's now gone if I zoom out you can see it doesn't matter that it's now gone beyond the end of the video here that's don't worry about that but the adjustment layer means that I could add a modifier to the adjustment layer and it will affect everything underneath it so all the video that is underneath this adjustment layer is affected by it so if I use um, curves again and I decide I want to bring that bring they're going to do a sort of high contrast with big black shadows in it so everything darker than that is black I'm gonna do the same with white I'm gonna do like super high contrast here and you see that that's affected all the footage underneath it and I could also um, as well as the adjustment layer I can also do that thing I did earlier which isn't where was it I'm looking for the um, saturation here we go I'm going to set the saturation to zero so I've now with one adjustment layer made the entire video a kind of high contrast black and white for all you um, fans of high contrast black and white out there um, yeah so that's those are some very handy effects to do in there other things to do I'm just going to delete that now for now uh, I'm just because this is showing you stuff and then deleting it that's kind of how this is working um, there's another effect strip I can use which is text now you don't have this has to be above the video I'm gonna put it there I'm gonna put it there actually above the video and I zoom in and um, extend it And what does this do? This allows you to add text. If you go to the top, effect strip, text. Where is it? Shadow? 
Oh, you can see, you can see it's right there, but it's absolutely tiny. Size, larger. Um, I don't want it quite that big. I'm going to put it to 50. No, let's try 100. Um, yeah, that'll do. Going to centre it, yeah, and the text is going to say the name of this dude here, whose name is Mark G-W-Y-N-N-E Jones. There we go. So there's some, I mean, the text here is kind of limited. Um, you've only got the option of a shadow. You haven't even got colour options or font options, but it's a good quick way of adding uh, subtitles to a video. Plus, you have actually got the option to export subtitles. Um, so you could make text in here and uh, get all your timing correct in here and then export it and then import it into YouTube or a DVD or whatever. So that is actually pretty useful. Yay! creating subtitles. I think that's what that's for, is for creating subtitles rather than doing fancy tan... fancy tantles? Fancy titles! Though you can adjust the position on the screen of it. You know, in a few versions of Blender Time it might be that there's loads of different fonts, there's loads of different colours, and it's a really powerful thing, we can hope. Other stuff there's... what else have we got? in the effects library. I mean, there aren't many effects here. There's a glow effect. There's also... I mean, the only other thing I want to... I think is worth showing you is that crossfade effect we've got going on here. Um, crossfade. Is there is also a wipe effect. So I could select that and press delete. And then select and shift select sit shift right click to select the second one and i'm going to add a an effect strip wipe and you can see that by default it slowly moves from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen but here are the buttons to edit it so we could we could have it in so now it goes from bottom to top. Remember when doing these wipes it's important that you select first the first shot and then the second shot. Otherwise, it, I'll show you what happens wrong if you do it the other way. I'll delete that again. If I select this one and then this one and then add effect strip wipe. Right, now if we start, start a bit before it and start going through it frame by frame you'll see that suddenly it goes to the second image and then it wipes in the first image and ah oh, you know what i'm just going to i'm just going to delete that at that point and uh, select them in the correct order select select the leftmost strip and then the rightmost strip and then oh yes yeah, shift a to add again i've said that already but yeah it's kind of useful uh, wipe so there are other options in the wipe as well as going from top to bottom we've got an uh, angle so we could set that at 90 degrees and then it goes from right to left and then if we click in rather than out, it's going from left to right. That's the transition I use at the end of each of these videos, except that I use the set the blur width to 0.1, so we get a nice blur between the two videos. There's also an iris, which is kind of cool, and I use that at the beginning of each of these videos. There's a clock wipe, which I did use once, but it is, in fairness, you know, kind of quite a tacky effect, but I, I thought it was appropriate at that point to use it. I apologise if I've offended you, any any of you, with my um, hideous editing techniques. But there's one more thing you can do with this wipe. Um, is you can actually use it for split screen. So we've got default fade here. If I unclick that, oh, I unclick it and then accidentally tick it again. If I unclick that, I can merely, s I can select how far down it is. And so, like, throughout this, that's now cut off at this point. And of course, you know, you can set this at any angle. And the blur width as well. And you can use this for split screen effects. So, I don't know, I suppose the classic one is two people talking on a phone. But you can also use it if you've 
got the camera on a tripod, you can have yourself on both sides of the screen, and that's a pretty neat effect there. So that's kind of handy. Okay, there's a load of other other little video editing techniques for you there. Um, I hope they'll find them useful. Thank you. Bye.